If you get an annoying pain in your buttock that can also radiate down the leg, then the exercises in this video may help. Hi everyone and welcome to Exercise for Health. I'm Richard and today we are looking at piriformis syndrome and I'm going to give you some exercises to help relieve it. If you're new to this channel, we offer tips, advice and exercises to help you manage your health condition with physical activity. So go ahead and tap the subscribe button below and the bell icon if you want to be notified of when we upload a new video. So first of all, let's look at what the piriformis is. It's a muscle located deep in your buttock under your glutes and horizontally attaches the base of the spine in the sacrum at the front to the head of the thigh bone or greater trochanter further back. Its main functions are to externally rotate the hip joint outwards when the leg is in alignment with the body, such as when standing or lying down. And it also abducts the hip when the hip is flexed, such as when in a seated position. If this muscle is overused due to repetition from running or cycling, or is overloaded due to poor biomechanics, or in many cases due to weakness from a sedentary lifestyle, then it can cause the muscle to spasm. This spasm or increased tension of the muscle can then irritate the sciatic nerve, which is located next to or through the piriformis muscle, causing the pain symptoms in the buttock. If you are experiencing pain in this region, then it's definitely worth getting checked by a medical professional to rule out other more serious underlying problems causing the symptoms. For example, a compression of the sciatic nerve due to a herniated disc in the lumbar spine can cause similar symptoms. And if you've been diagnosed with such a condition, then I've done a video of exercises for this and you can click on the pop-out banner up here to watch that one. One method that some physiotherapists use to indicate that it might be the piriformis muscle causing the pain is to conduct the FAIR test. This involves lying on the non-affected side of your body, so the painful area is on the top. You then flex the hip, bringing the knee up to 90 degrees, then adduct the hip, allowing the knee to drop towards the floor, then internally rotate the hip by lifting the ankle upwards towards the ceiling, keeping the knee down. This places a stretch on the piriformis muscle, so if this test increases your pain symptoms, then it's likely that the piriformis muscle is causing the problem. If you are experiencing a lot of pain in this region, then you'll want to address the positions or activities that might be adding to the problem. This could mean adjusting your seating or sleeping position, or modifying your volume of running or cycling or any activity that aggravates it, to reduce the symptoms so you can focus on improving the pain tolerance and load capacity of the muscle through a variety of exercises. You could use a tennis ball on the affected area to try and gently massage the tissue to improve the blood supply to it during the initial phase of rehab. And this may also be a good time to stretch the muscles around the hip to get some short-term relief from the tension or muscle spasms. In the examples of stretches and strength exercises that follow, the side I'm trying to target will be indicated by my red sock. Two examples of stretches include the first one that starts on all fours and extending the non-affected leg out behind you a bit while bringing the foot of the affected leg up underneath you. This will externally rotate the hip while it's in flexion. Without bending the knee too much, think about pushing and twisting the opposite hip towards the knee on the floor. This will adduct the hip and engage a stretch on the piriformis and other deep muscles around the bottom. You can then begin to sit the hips further backwards, flexing the hip more, or bring the foot further forwards to rotate the hip more, or twist the pelvis towards the knee more to get a deeper stretch. If you struggle to do this stretch on all fours, you can do a similar stretch lying on your back, bringing the affected side ankle onto your opposite knee and then grabbing the opposite leg, gently pulling it towards your chest to engage the stretch. Hold any position for at least 30 seconds or more to allow the muscle to relax. The second one starts lying on your back. Bend your knees a bit so you're not bringing your feet too close to your bottom. Bring the ankle of the non-affected leg across to the opposite knee of the side that you want to stretch and use it to pull the knee across and down towards the floor. This will internally rotate the hip while it's almost neutral and you may need to adjust your position to find the stretch. 
You can use the leg on top to push the ankle into the outside of the knee to add some pressure to increase the stretch. It's worth noting here that because everyone's anatomy will be slightly different, some will find one stretch more effective than the other. For me, I can feel the first one hit the spot immediately, but I didn't feel much of a stretch on the second one. So do the one that best works for you. After a few days allowing your piriformis a bit of respite and recovery, strengthening the muscles around the hip to improve their capacity and to help improve the tolerance for the onset of pain would be the best course of action for long-term gains. Therefore, any of the following three strength exercises that can be done daily would be ideal to help you reduce the symptoms and get you back to your daily activities again. The Lion Clamshell is a favorite on this channel and can help with so many hip and lower back problems. Starting on one side with the affected hip on top and your hip joint neutral, so your body is in alignment without bringing your knees up. Externally rotate the hip by lifting the top knee away from the other one, pivoting on the feet. Pause at the top for a second or two before returning the knee back to the start. Aim to do a set of 10 reps, by which point you should be feeling something around your bottom on the outside of the top hip. You can further increase the load by doing this exercise with a looped resistance band around the knees as a progression. The second one is fire hydrants, which starts off on all fours. With your hips directly over your knees, begin to lift the affected side knee up and out to the side without rotating your pelvis or torso. When you've lifted it as high as you can, hold it for a second or two before lowering the knee back down. It's important with this one that your whole leg moves in unison and the ankle is raised out to the side with the knee. Again, as before, aim to do 10 reps to really target the muscles effectively. Finally, the last one is hip airplanes. This is traditionally done freestanding, but to avoid any loss of balance, you can do this holding a wall or support next to you. As this is a closed chain exercise, where the foot of the affected side remains fixed on the floor, your pelvis will move around the hip joint with your body weight going through it. Therefore, starting on one foot of the side that you want to target, flex the hip by leaning the body forwards, allowing the knee to bend a bit. This will get you to your starting position. Then think of tilting your pelvis like the wings of a plane to turn left and right, which will abduct and adduct the hip. Be sure that you're not twisting your spine and keeping your pelvis still. So really think about lifting the opposite hip up, turning away from the fixed leg, and then dropping the opposite hip down, turning into the fixed leg. Do this movement slowly 10 times and you should feel a great deal of activation of the muscles of the hip that you're standing on. I hope this helps you relieve the pain in your butt and gets you back to the activities that you enjoy. If so, then please give it a like by clicking the thumbs up button below to help this channel grow so more people can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching and remember to stay active, keep moving, and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.